Right, a very good day. My name's Callum from uh, DX Commander. I'm on our DX Commander website. When you buy a DX Commander, you will buy either a signature series or a classic series. There is fundamentally three of each, okay? What we've got on the signature series is a 9, a 12, and an 18, which is absolutely monstrous. Only the 9 is unguide. When you buy a classic series, there's five listed here, but the fundamentally three antennas. We've got the Expedition, and I'll, uh, there's a full build video on this one here. There's the Classic, and then there's the Rapide. However, we do a Rapide Plus, which is like the Signature 9, is completely unguide and comes with a ground post. And we also do the Classic with an extra 100 meters of wire and that turns it into an 80 meter because you get a few more radials and you can do an inverted L just like the picture is there. Then you'll find a user guide. All right, once you've bought your kit, if you click the user guide, this has recently been updated to the point where I've got print suggestions so you don't have to print everything out. All kits, you need pages three to 15 and I get a run through those for you. And if you've just got say a classic, you need page 20, for instance. We briefly discuss radials here, and I'll discuss them again in a minute. And we discuss flat roof installation. I never thought flat roofs would work. But if you go to the DX Commander site and go to the gallery page, you will see if you scroll around, eventually we will find some people that have put them on roofs. There's one there. There is a roof installation. And Mirko also put a DS commander on a roof and that video is there. Every kit has a telescopic pole, a ground post for the signature nine rapid plus that you dig into the ground between a foot and 18 inches. It doesn't really matter as long as it's very well put in with some concrete and stuff. Then we have a ground plate and a driven plate various spreader plates and all spreader plates are now in marine gray you get at least one reel of dx10 signature 12 comes with three for instance an so239 assembly already soldered and crimped and stuff fork connectors shock cord and everything and over the years it's all been tested out and it all works nothing on the kits rust anymore nothing gives way it's completely uv proof these days and that's fine so we have a snug telescopic pole assembly. I suggest you take it outside and just experiment laying out a couple of workhorses or a couple of garden chairs and just to get a feeling of what that feels like. Don't be shy about really giving it a twist and pull, okay? And for the 12s and 18s, I suggest you get a friend along. You hold one section your friend holds the other section and you really give it a good twist and pull and get the thing out particularly the first few sections where all the weight is on however we do supply these clamps which you can tighten up and that will assist keeping the pole up for long periods of time first thing is you do is you put in the so239 and screw that in securely but you can remove the little serrated washer that comes with it it's just not required and the ground nut as well now for all the classic series we've now got an alloy base we've spent years trying to find the right quality for the base so you can see here we've got this is all alloy with an alloy cap and then we have had an insulator clip called a herbie clip and you have to snap that together and stick it on that insulates the driven plate where your elements connect to from your ground. Double check the inside it doesn't have a little manufacturing defect. Get a file out and just make sure that that fits snugly over the pole down to as far as the Herbie clip. Don't force anything. I mentioned the stay up kits. These now come in a PA66 material. They shouldn't rot. Completely UV proof. The expeditions come with wing nuts, so you can do it by hand. All the other kits come with a little hex bolt, which is eight mil. I think there is an American spanner which fits 8mm very well. I used to think putting a bit of tape here helped. Actually, I don't think it does, but you can glue your pole together if you want to have it up completely permanent. And I did a video of that 
gluing. And by the way, that works a treat. Regular super glue is fine. There is also a rubberized type super glue you can use if you're paranoid. All right, you can test your pole. And the only one I really want to test is the 12 and the 18. Yet the others you can just rest on your shoulder to sort it out. For the 18 and sometimes the 12 as well, I'm going to use this as your pole. The base of the pole is, say, here. You lay it on the floor, and as you lift it up, you'll find very often that the bottom will want to skip out. There's an easy way out of that. If this is where your base is, you can just put a little guy about 60 centimetres, two feet away, and some cord, and some sort of base, anything, a piece of wooden dowel, it doesn't matter. Right, it doesn't have to fit perfectly. In fact, some of the bases that I've made, just a little bit of you know, it's a little bit of aluminium tube, and it just it just fits fine. Into the base, obviously take the bottom cap off, and then you clearly as it comes up, it's fine. The other thing you can do is if the if you've got a guy point roughly at this this area here, and you know you're going to put your main guys here, here, and somewhere over there. You can drape guy lines just around here. Just drape them around here and do a test deployment. And these will just pull up to here and then lay the pole down. And then you've got a, an accurate point of where the guy is going to go if you're single handed. Same with the 12. The rest just put on your, your shoulder and do the guys up. So once you've got your plates on and your stay up kit on, we need to make the elements. So you take a reel of wire and it says here, just cut as the chart. I get an email every day saying, do I have to add everything together, fold backs and whatever, because most elements, if you remember, they've got to be secured somehow. So you've got your, your, your base plate here, your driven plate, and you have an element coming up we need a little fold over at the top. That is in the chart. So just cut as per the chart. And then we install our four connectors. You just strip a quarter of an inch, six millimeters off the base, crimp and solder. You don't have to solder. I've stopped soldering. I've got a good crimper now. I used to just use some blunt side cutters, get some uh, glue line heat shrink supplied on the end, and then that'll be fine. You can also buy some little kids number beads, for instance. I know a lot of people do this just to make it look all nice. So you can look at the base and know which one is a 20 meter element and which is the 15. I happen to know the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, and so on. And I've got some tape that I use these days. I also put a dob of Vaseline on the threads on my SO239. And contrary to popular belief, it doesn't wash out of the rain. It seems to last forever. So radials, radials will work on a 90 degree or 180 degree or 360 degree. Anything from eight to any number of radials, it'll just work. All right. The uh, Dr. George Brown and company from RCA Labs in the 20s, they did some tests where they said you needed 120 radials, but that was for a shortened radiator. OK, that was like uh, not a quarter wave, but like eighth of a wave. They realised you needed that. And I've got a phone call, so hold on a minute. Hi, right, it's Callum. So radials, any number will do. All right. We sometimes worry a little bit about too, too much about radials. You want them dead short, make them dead short. It'll still work. OK, and then you get into the definition of what will work. I made a video about that here. You can read it if you want. Just don't get, don't make it over complicated. Get a few down and it'll work. You want extra one dB, put 10 times the amount down. And then you can pin them down well with anything. I used to make actually a piece of wooden dowel with a notch in it and push it into the ground, it'll rot away, you know. The actual radios, I do a four to a bunch. I don't cut them, that. I cut them much shorter these days, all right, before it goes into the four connector. Slip on your heat shrink before you crimp it. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to hang around trying to get it all over the, all the hole for. But that'll keep all the moisture out, you see, and you won't get any corrosion in there. Lay your radials out neatly on the ground. You can be as neat as you, you want 
or you can scatter them. And when I'm testing, I throw them out. You can also, at the base here, I, I leave a little bit of wiggle room. Okay, so my radial comes along and there's a little bit of wiggle. All right, so I can move it around. And I don't know if I say that in the user guide, but if you take the bottom screw cap off and put it away somewhere because it's for permanent use, you can leave your ground plate on the ground permanently forever. And then when you want to take the pole off, you undo your guy, unscrew the SO2394 connector and the whole thing just comes off. All right. Otherwise, you've got to start undoing all the radials and everything. And let's do these element foldbacks. Most of these element foldbacks are about six centimeters, just over, well, what's that, two inches. And you can see what we're doing here on this picture. We're going to make a knot in some shock cord, and then we're going to make a loop in the DX10 wire, and then we're going to put some heat shrink over it. Now, some people very occasionally have reported that they've had a failure of the glue line heat shrink in very hot weather. Well, we've tested something out that you get an extremely right. small right. So black so zip tie, put it around, snip it, it off, really and then pull. that'll kill your problem. Not. The evolution of a stopper knot. A stopper knot is just an overhand knot, regular, you know, that we know and love, and you just go around one more time. And if you tease it all together, it looks very nice when it's tied, and that is a stopper knot. Okay, and we put that through the plate and we also as you can see we put it through the loop here so this little loop that you're making has to be about the right size about three quarters of an inch it won't come out but it means you can disconnect it for maintenance right this is pretty some people find this chart a little bit difficult but just follow your color 12.4 signature in purple the so239 is at one side now you just follow that purple line all the way around so we've got 40 meters quite near it look we got 20 meters next to it and we got 12, 18, 30, 17, 15 and 10. I can't remember why I did it that way and it would probably work any way you like. So don't, don't get too fussy about it. I'm just looking at that 12. I'm not quite sure if my 12 is like that. 10, 15. Yeah, 10 and 12 are opposite each other. 15 and 20. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a couple of engineering reasons behind it as well. So you don't get all the tension on one side of the pole. I remember now. Right. On longer elements, we have a midway tensioning loop, and it looks like this. It's like a, just a take the wire, make it into a Z shape, all right, and then put some heat shrink over here. That's all we're doing, and we're making a little loop. It just means that rather than tensioning it all the way at the top, it'll rattle around in the breeze a bit, so we can do some midway tensioning. And on the expedition pole, if you're doing a three element four band system, I suggest putting those loops on every single speed slot. Roly is putting his expedition kit up and down in seven minutes. So I haven't tested how quick. Maybe we should do a competition, see if I can get it better than that. Tuning. Some people forever are cutting all these elements too long and then they're spending a whole day cutting it all back. You honestly don't need to do this. The amount of times that I've made one of my antennas straight out the cut chart here and it just works. We did it with Tom. We did it with Jonathan's expedition build. Um, I don't know what it is because the laws of physics in Warwickshire aren't going to be much different <laughs> or at all different from your place. The only two bands you should be worried about really are 80 and 10. 80 is enormous and so is 10. The rest of them, it just fit in 1.5 to 1 SWR all the way along and the other thing is two people have had terrible problems and it turned out it was their analyzer and patch cable making up some numbers so if you're ever in doubt about the tune just go back to the shack plug your coax in and just see what the radio is saying right because the radio is just telling you the basic swr and all the complex swr that some of these analyzers give us However, there is an SWR calculator and there's a link to it here. And I've done a video about tuning antennas on this one here. Now, now we just get to the sort of tips on the builds. I'll, I'll just run through each of them. The Expedition's got a really cool way of doing the very end. I use a bit of PVC tubing with a knot on the end and it just holds it. Okay, so that's fine. You can see the speed slots here. 
Again, that video will show it to you. So instead of threading the elements through the holes, you clip them in now. All right, 80 meters on the expedition. I have tested. You just need to get creative about whereabouts 80 meter comes off. About halfway up the pole, use a bit of shock cord, use a bit of cord around the pole, whatever you want. It is designed for holidays, days out, and that sort of thing. All right, it's not designed for, but it'll work permanently, but it's designed for speedy up and down. All right. Oh, and there is a comment here about repeatability. If you've got like a muscle memory where you go, yeah, that's where it normally goes, and you do take your, uh, you deploy your antenna often, use your muscle memory to go, yeah, that's how far it goes. We very rarely, if ever, I don't think we've ever had a break with someone just pulling it apart. We've had a break that way, <laughs> but not that way. Okay. The Rappi is the same as building any other antenna. It's uh, a bunch of quarter waves which go up a pole. End of story. Other than the fact, if you want to do 40 meters, we can put a little coil, coil and it says it somewhere here. There's a slightly different cut chart. We swap out 30 for 40 meters and you put this about halfway up the first section. Some people get tape measures out and everything else. About halfway up the first section. <laughs> That's where it is. And if it's the Rapid Plus, just like the Signature 9, we dig a hole and put a po post in it, all right? The Classic is the only one which will take four or six elements. I, mean, I don't know why I bother doing this, really, um, because there's more holes for us to tap out and more holes to, to be made and everything else. The only reason I've done a four section is to give it as best SWR and as much bandwidth as possible by separating the elements out. Thinking about it, I might drop that. I don't think anybody does it. They, easy, they either use three or six. Remember, on 40 meters, that also does 15 on a harmonic as well. But you will find on average ground that 15 meters should give you a tiny bit more gain than a regular quarter wave. The signature nine is identical. Other than the fact you dig a hole in the ground and you put a post in all right, and you slip it over the top. You tension that top element by going through this, uh, going through the loop and then come back down the other side of the pole because that linear loading is important of getting the, the spacing right. OK, and finally, I've, I've had to put this in a calibration coil for 15 and 40 if you find that you want 15 meters lower or higher then this is the trick basically putting a one or two turns just like we do on the rapide but much less so 12.4 it builds like all the other builds other than the fact that 80 goes up right up the middle of, well not the middle of the pole but it goes uh, one wind every section and then when we get to the top, well, near the top, depending on where the plates fit and everything else, we make this coil. And here's the coil here. And then we've got a tune. It moves the harmonic actually on 80 meters to exactly the 30 meter band. Now, it doesn't matter if this coil is a few inches out. Do it to the book if you can. But if you find that for whatever reason, the way your plates are is you can't quite get there. Well, just come down two inches. And I'm reminding you here that as as we go up the pole and we have these spreaders. And you're trying to tension this element all the way up. I'm reminding you that you will need a little tension loop along the way, pulling vertically upwards. Otherwise, all the tension is trying to happen at the top. And that's what that picture is. On the 12.4. Because I could, and a few other reasons, I've used three quarter wave elements on 12 and 10. One of the reasons is that a quarter wave gives a not bad match to 50 ohms. A three quarter wave gives an even better match. It might be immeasurable, but when you've got so many elements on the 12.4 and the 18 actually, is that going all the way from the 80 meter band up as we get up towards 12 and 10 meters, we're getting all the harmonics starting to poke through. 
and we found that a three quarter wave element masks those harmonics and allows you to, to actually tune an element on 12 and 10. So that's the reason for three quarter waves. You can build them as quarter waves if you want to, but I wouldn't worry about it. And then we get onto the 18, which is exactly the same as all the others. It's just enormous. It's big, okay? So I've actually bought a hard hat now just in case something went wrong because you've got something potentially that could fall from 60 feet, 18 meters, and maybe even safety glasses, something like that, because you just don't want an accident. Now I'm going to give you some, some other tips, all right? I don't know why it is in the amateur radio community, people say it's a lot easier to cut than join. And on a DX Commander, it's actually not because you've got this element and at the bottom, we've got a fork connector. And at the top, we've got a loop that you might have spent a lot of time on. Okay. So, and some people slit all this up, open it back up again, remove three, you know, an inch or whatever, and put it all back together again. I'm in the habit of doing it in the middle. And I'll tell you why. I go, I want to make this, let's say, 50 millimetres or two inches. So the first thing I do is I get a bit of tape, yellow tape, or what well, I'll use red today. I mark it there and I measure exactly, let's say, 30 centimetres. So I know that between these two points is 30 centimetres. When I finished, because I'm adding in some wire, let's say, or cutting wire, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to want, let's say, 35 centimetres between these two. So I can then make my incision, do my adjustment, let's say shorten it. And now if I wanted to shorten it, it was 30 centimetres. I now want to make sure between here and here is going to be 25 centimetres. And I'm not guessing, all right? Same with lengthening. So obviously, if you lengthen, you're going to end up with you're going to need to put two joins in, right between the two, between there and there. But if you use this sort of join and then apply your glue lined heat shrink, you will find it will be, I mean, it won't be as strong, right? But it's not under super high tension and you won't get any moisture, no corrosion, and it'll just work. If you really want to get the soldering iron out, that's up to you. I don't. There's four knots I use all the time and a blooming handy. I suggest you get a grip of that and have a look at them. If you're near salt water, anything can start corroding, but nothing we've got anymore can corrode, I don't believe. For the connoisseur, you might want to add a little bit more glue lined heat shrink at this point here. I would. I don't, not with the radials. Just let the radials suck the water in. You know, it'll, it'll be years before it'll corrode. What else have we got that is worthwhile saying? Don't over tension your guy lines particularly the ones further up, because that is just supplying more and more tension this way. The guy lines are to stop it going that way. So when my 12.4 blows in one direction, one of the guy lines is, you know, it's got that much slack on it. Do check every six months something's not going wrong. Okay, I do, and it works. We don't need to UV protect anything anymore, but if you feel it, you do, then 303 UV spray works very well. By the way, the paint on the classics will fade in time. Uh, can't do anything about that. It looks quite nice, actually. It looks even more military, chalky, uh, that sort of dark green color. If you're trying to dismantle your DX Commander and it's been up forever, you will find sometimes it is locked solid because you get water ingress and beasties and <laughs> all sorts of other things. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So you've got one section here, and then we have another section that is locked solid here. And it just won't move. So I dribble very hot water over this section and let that dribble all over. You have to get then there's a block of wood at one end 
I hold it up against it and I get either another block of wood or a rubber mallet or something like that. And I just tap this end here. Just tap it. And you'll find tap, 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 and it will come free. Okay, and that's the way to get it out. If your SWR is completely wrong, it's probably not the antenna, all right? The fault finding method, if you've got one band that's absolutely cuckoo, is disconnect all the others, just let them hang there, a bit of tape so they don't blow around too much. Back to your radio, your analyzer, and see, is that element tuning anywhere, all right? If it's not, then maybe the fault connector isn't connected to the copper or something else. But you can disconnect one at a time. Every band will move slightly as you do that, but you'll be able to go, which curve is this? If you are a very high power person, we tested DX10 for 65 seconds on the 20 meter band, right? Up higher, we noticed you need what we call this QRO loop, because if you just go up and back, that's gonna get very hot. This way, the electrons don't try and leave the end and burst into flames. So that QRO loop works well. And then you're going to have to do your tuning like this because it's very difficult to sort out your tuning this way. Yes, we can supply replacement shock cord, but if you find Marlow shock cord, you can get it anywhere in the world normally. The Dyneema jacket, it's more expensive, but it works really nicely and it should last a very, very long time. Radial wire, you don't have to use DX10. It's lovely to pin down on the ground, though. Any wire will do, even, you know, old Ethernet cables stripped down. Chicken wire as radials, beware that I've heard of two people that put chicken wire down, and every time the uh, atoms jumped around making iron oxide, they were hearing clicking in their headphones. Wind survival. People want to know the wind survival, and I sometimes wonder where manufacturers get the wind survival numbers from because wind isn't a constant. It comes in gusts, and if the gust is at the wrong time, then things can go wrong. So the best method of sieve severe storm, just like trees and bridges come down, um, so can all your antennas, towers, Yagis and everything. Why don't you lift it off and lay it on a couple of hooks? All right. Any questions in the comments below? I just wanted to answer a lot of the questions I get on email every day. And I thought it was worthwhile running through that. I wish I could be a bit more sprightly today, but I'm just running through a user guide and I've really realized that I've got to chuck a whole load of B roll in here uh, to make the video a little bit more exciting for you. So in the meantime, uh, have a good day, enjoy your build, enjoy your antennas, whatever you want to do, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.